A spring lock failure is one of the worst things that someone can suffer in the FNAF series, or at least it seems that way. The only thing worse than a spring lock failure though is trying to figure out the lore of the series, but for those in universe, there's nothing more painful or agonizing. However, there are some characters who deserve this fate, and while only one has really suffered it, there should have been more. But which fan bases am I about to make absolutely furious? That's what we're exploring today. Let's do it. In at 10, Elizabeth Afton. Elizabeth is at the top of this list because, well, she got killed, but she also doesn't really seem to deserve it until after she gets killed, and then she deserves the spring locking. Which I mean, in a way, makes sense, and it's something that I've been using as evidence when it comes to who I think the vengeful spirit is. Because, you know, spirits, when they're, uh, you know, being spirits for longer periods of time, would understandably start to go crazy, or even crazier, and this is an idea that Supernatural, the, the show, has used in length. And the same idea, though, could be applying to Elizabeth and Crying Child. Just because you start off good or loving your father doesn't mean that you'll continue to see things that way in a few years time. And Elizabeth, while not deserving a spring locking in 1983 when she dies, definitely deserves one come sister location in FNAF 6. I mean, she literally betrays her brother and sister location, nearly killing him, and then, again, she also betrayed him, and then in FNAF 6, she wants to make her father proud. Her murderous, psychopathic father. She wants to make him proud. Considering how you've been possessing an animatronic, um, that he made, that caused you uh, to die that he made, I think that you would have already made him pretty proud, I guess. It's a damn shame that you turned into this, but whatever. In at 9, Mr. Hippo. Okay, this is kind of a joke number, but also not, because Mr. Hippo is literally the worst thing ever in Ultimate Custom Night. Mr. Hippo is a viable animatronic from FNAF 6 that returns as an antagonist in Ultimate Custom Night. Okay, Mr. Hippo will climb through the duck systems trying to reach one of the two hoses in the office. Hoses? Is that right? I don't know. I just copied and pasted that line from the wiki. The player needs to use an audio lure to keep him in place and to move him around so that they can use the heater to push him back, and he is he is fooled 100% of the time by the audio lure. Also, is fooled faster than Helpy Frog. However, most of the scare factor from this animatronic doesn't come from their behavior or their design. This time around, rather, their death lines. Because you see, Mr. Hippo has a knack for going on about things. A lot. Okay, it's like me on a first date. Still, he will go into like five minute long speeches that you have to deal with every time he kills you. Meaning that if you get jump scared, you're boned for enough time to make a sandwich, okay? Which is annoying as hell. Getting killed by him enough will eventually and cause you to end up agreeing with me that he needs to be spring locked. Because you end up knowing what comes after the smoke of the jump scare clears and it's just pain. In at 8, Roxy. Okay, I know that Roxy and Mr. Hippo are animatronics and incapable of actually feeling pain because of a spring locking, but honestly, I also just hate this kind of person. This The self-centered tool bag who only cares about themselves, whether they secretly hate themselves or not, that's not what matters here, okay? Who you are and what kind of person you are is defined by how you treat others and who you are when the pressure is on. And Roxy is just horrible. And while they may not be able to feel pain, from the spring locking, at least Roxy will be contained if they got spring locked, okay? And honestly, that's what I need. I don't want to deal with this personality type. I've dealt with enough people like this throughout my life, and I'm still only 22 goddamn years old, which means that I'm really fed up with this shit. So yeah, there's, there's not much else to say with this one other than I want her to be restrained so that I don't have to deal with her. Uh, so yeah, that's it. That's the number. What are you still doing here? Go to the next one. And it's seven, Cassidy. Some say that Cassidy was springlocked, but honestly, there isn't really much evidence for that. Uh, but you know what? If she wasn't, she damn well deserves to be. And why, you ask? How could like a, how could a little girl who got killed and then go on to possess the killer so he could suffer for all eternity deserve such a fate as a springlocking? Well, exactly for the reason you listed. Because everyone thinks that Cassidy is the vengeful spirit, aka the one you should not have killed, aka the one who possesses Zapton to make him suffer. But when you look at it, Logically, taking into consideration more than just what Matt Patton says, it would make more sense for Crying Child to be the vengeful spirit. But nobody wants to listen to me. Nobody wants to hear even my suggestions because of Cassidy. The amount of hate that I have gotten in the comments, in my DMs, on TikTok for God's sakes, is more than I have gotten for anything else. Even more than I got for suggesting that Michael was a Crying Child robot. Just because William didn't kill Crying Child 
directly does not mean that he couldn't possibly blame the man who made the robot and gave it enough power to crush a skull for his death. Which all, cause you know, that wouldn't normally be required. Plus, Cassidy only has significance because you think she's the vengeful spirit. Take that away, and what importance does she have? Exactly. So just for that, and for hardly anyone being willing to even hear me out, Cassidy damn well deserves it. Honestly, she could be higher on the list, but I wanted to rant about other people a little bit more. So yeah, there you go. In at six, FNAF cops. The cops in the FNAF universe are absolutely the most moronic bunch of people I have ever I guess not seen, but heard of, honestly. Like, yeah, I get that they couldn't catch William for story purposes, but that seemingly was retcon, since in the first game they said that they had made an arrest. They could have ended it right there. The story could have been over, but they couldn't find the body, so they let him go. Yeah, ignore the animatronics that smell like death, are leaking blood and other bodily fluids, and that many parents have compared to reanimated corpses. Those don't have anything to do with this scenario. Yeah, totally. And even when they find baby's blueprints and see that she has a child storage tank, they don't do anything more than question him. Quote, there's no doubting what you've achieved on a technical level. These are clearly state of the art. There are just certain design choices that were made for these robots that we don't fully understand. We were hoping that you could shed some light on those. Dude, arrest him! <laughs> And search the bloody, rotten body smelling animatronics. God damn it, how hard is this? Okay, if it's a crime scene or a suspected crime scene, you, you, come on. If it's a crime scene, you don't ha need to have a warrant, for fuck's sakes. Okay, they all deserve spring lockings for the sheer stupidity alone. I'm surprised that they didn't crawl into one and then get killed by it just because they're that damn stupid. Halfway ah! through it at number five, William Afton. William is at number five because, well, he absolutely did deserve to be a Springlock victim, uh, but he also actually was, and seemingly is the only one who actually was on this list. But, like, for real, this man deserved what he got in more ways than one. Seriously. He was a mass murderer who would have gotten a lethal injection anyway, but also the technician that made the suits, the man that handles the suit maintenance on the daily, and is absolutely explained to every single employee that has put one of these fuckers on the proper procedure for the spring lock suits. Mostly for tax and liability reasons, probably, okay? But including the spring bonnie suit that he uses to kill people, okay? Then he gets inside one without thinking and somehow doesn't notice the moisture in the room. The leaking ceiling causing the spring locks that were active at this moment to fail and just fill him full of metal, okay? But like, it's your building, my guy. How are you not painfully aware of the leaking ceiling in this back room? Really, like how? How do you not know? S seriously, somehow this lucky motherfucker managed to get possessed by someone that he killed who was so pissed at him that they kept him alive for all of his other supposed supposed to be deaths that because they wanted William to suffer. Like, God damn it. No matter who it is, whether you believe it was Crying Child or Cassidy, despite there being a more logical conclusion when you don't just blindly listen to MatPat, like, why? Why couldn't you just let him die? I get that you want him to suffer, okay, obviously. I mean, I put him on this list. I wanted him to be springlocked. But like, doing that results in him killing more people. So why? Why would you do that? In it for Vanessa. I feel like this one is kind of obvious, uh, and you may get mad at me for saying this, but Vanessa deserves to be spring locked, man, okay? You're probably thinking, but she's possessed, you moron. She doesn't have control over her actions. But that's the thing. She does. Vanessa has no willpower to sacrifice herself for the greater good, okay? At this point, I think that it's safe to, to infer that Jeremy from FNAF VR didn't go crazy because he just saw a glitch trap. It's fairly reasonable to say that he got possessed. Tape Girl hadn't broken glitch trap into the tapes yet, and he was probably just able to possess whoever he wanted. So if Jeremy did get possessed, and the possession worked in a similar way that it does with Vanessa, which would make sense, Jeremy would at times be sentient and in control of his own body. So if he knew about about glitch trap. Maybe he didn't cut his face off because he was freaking out like he had just taken like the um, Epsom salt because you use it in the bath. Maybe maybe he did it to try and kill the monster that was inside of him. Okay, so if Vanessa had the gall, Afton wouldn't really have a vessel. Okay, especially since the VR game at this point was probably abandoned. But she won't. But she won't do it. So she deserves to be spring locked. Getting close to the end in number three, Gregory. The way I see it, Gregory is such a stuck up little shit that he would absolutely deserve to be crushed by metal robotic bits being 
put in the same place as his bones. Because this kid is just a damn menace that seemingly doesn't want to take responsibility for any of his actions. And you know what? None of you hold him accountable either. Gregory orders the robots to disassemble Vanny. Uh, quote, Okay, Gregory being willing to kill Vanny is already pretty messed up, but while some would argue self-defense, this is not self-defense. Self-defense requires a reasonable amount of force to be used, okay? Tearing a person limb from limb is not reasonable force. This kid is easily able to destroy all three animatronics without a moment's hesitation and then use their upgrades on Freddy. He is willing to kill Vanny, like I said, despite actually seemingly knowing her like we see in the best ending. And then he burns Burn Trap multiple times in an attempt to stop him from taking control over Freddy, um, but again, he's also just setting fire to this thing all the time. So like, what the absolute living hell is this kid doing? And how is he so nonchalant about this whole thing? Okay, this guy literally kills Vanny and then only gets emotional when he has to go talk to a destroyed Freddy robot that they can remake. Dude, Vanny is literally bleeding out right next to you. I'm sure that her, her ribs are just splayed across the floor. Dude, couldn't you have just said like stop Vanny or restrain Vanny? Stop Vanny would have been the easiest one, not freaking disassemble, okay? You're not panicking about literally anything else in this game, okay? Just, just say something that doesn't involve a human dying for God's sakes, okay? Stop Vanny, like, dude. And ultimately, in number two, Henry. Yes, I'm going to continue the Henry hate train. Choo choo, get on board, mother because despite how many people try and defend him, I will never stand down. I don't get what Henry's deal is because he does not kill William at any point in the series aside from trying to make it look like a fire did it. But William is already considered dead. How would you killing him make things suspicious? So why would you try to cover it up with a fire? For some reason, okay, he seems to be fine offing William's son when he gets the chance, though. I mean, in both of the fires that Henry has set that we see, FNAF 3 and FNAF 6, Michael was there both times. And he didn't seem to care that Michael was in the building either time, okay? He doesn't even give Michael the opportunity to leave in FNAF 6, despite there having been a way out planned. Quote from Henry's final speech. And to you, my brave volunteer, who somehow found this job listing not intended for you. Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that that's not not what you want. I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. You have a feeling? What are you, the black eye frickin' peas? He assumes that we also want to die in these halls, but doesn't give us the chance to actually make that decision for ourselves. He just forces us to die, since he doesn't give us a way out, okay? That's murder, <laughs> whether we wanted it or not. Okay, assisted suicide is still illegal in the majority of states, I'm pretty sure, okay? But even then, not giving us the choice, even just assuming that we want it makes it a murder. Instead of like having a f the fire burn the building down or having baby lob his head off, okay? He should have had to suffer a spring lock failure just so that he could see how easy it would have been just to, to off Afton directly instead of trying to do it like a coward. And finally, in a number one, Michael Afton. Michael Afton absolutely, in my mind, deserves to have gotten springlocked instead of simply burning in FNAF 6, okay? Like, sure, he seems to be playing the good guy going after his father, but in reality, Michael, to me, he's, he's just playing the hero this whole time and not actually doing anything. He says he's trying to right his father's wrongs and whatnot, but even Oliver Queen did more than that, okay? He's not doing it because he's a good person, he's doing it because he feels bad and not because of, like, some higher moral code. He blames himself for getting his brother killed, which I mean is understandable, but then that subsequently means that anything he does to try and like fix the things that his father did is just to make himself feel better about his own mistakes. Because in the end, nothing is gonna bring his little bro back, okay? And he doesn't even really have the stomach to actually stop his father once and for all. He says that he's going to come find him, but then when he does in FNAF 6, he doesn't burn down the place to stop him, okay? Henry does that. Yeah, Henry is the only one who's actually willing to sack up and try to stop William, even if he does it in a cowardly way, okay? It just shows how not serious Michael is. And if he really wanted to make sure that William was dead, he wouldn't have let himself burn in the FNAF 6 fire, okay? But he does. He lets himself burn, or at least doesn't actually successfully get out of the building so that he won't have to feel the regret of hurting his brother anymore, okay? Because he has the curse of knowledge since he knows what his father was doing and he just, he doesn't want to deal with it anymore. And you know what? That deserves a spring locking. That's right. I don't care how mad at you you are at me in the comments, okay? I don't care. It's, it's true, all right? It's Monday morning. I'm mad. That's all the time we have for today, friends. Thank you all so much for watching. I've been Shalom Ryan Connor Monroe and I'll see you in another video.